Thanks to everyone for being here. We are so excited to have you, uh, all of you here today. Uh, each one of you have, has played a role in this, in this event. And this is what's uh, so fun about uh, this anniversary. And we decided that we, we needed to, to, uh, to recognize this milestone. Uh, 10 years ago, on a morning that, believe it or not, I mean, this is toasty compared to the morning that we, uh, uh, that we had 10 years ago. Uh, there, I mean, there was literally, for those of you who weren't there, there was literally ice on the podium. Uh, and, the, and the stage was completely covered with frost. We started uh, an adventure, uh, a formal, formally started. It had started many years before that, that led to the, the one, I think one of the most significant actions and investments this region has ever made, and that's the light rail system. Uh, many of you were deeply involved in this investment, and uh, many of you uh, deserve, and we cannot adequately recognize or thank everybody who played a role in this, because this truly was, uh, truly was a, uh, a community event. Leadership from across city lines and, and everyone else got involved. And so we wanted to, after 10 years, to sort of step back and say, well, the first question is, which seems pertinent in these days, what's gone on over the last 10 years? I think we can all admit that uh, we've seen great uh, things happen since light rail. As a matter of fact, we, uh, we wanted not only to celebrate the 10th year, but we wanted to measure that impact. So this is both a combination celebration of 10 years and also a release of our, uh, the first quality of life report. Our staff at Valley Metro and others have gone back and looked to see the differences, the changes we've made in lifestyle, in investment, in health, all those, uh, all those pertinent and relevant things, the things that have impacted life in our region that we believe, and I think the facts and the data show, are directly related to the, this community's investment in light rail. But before we go further, we have to take care of the administrative business. There are so many of you who are honorable here today. And then there's elected officials, too. Uh, <laughs> I can say that, OK? See, when you're a former, that, become, that means you become a dishonorable as opposed to an honorable. So I can sort of say that. Uh, we have speakers, and I will introduce them as they come, as they come up. But we'd like to, to, uh, to recognize those of you who are here who are current and former elected officials. Councilmember Robin Arredondo Savage from the city of Tempe. Councilmember Chris Glover and from City Mesa, both my board members. They are the best council members I know of. <laughs> Councilmember Sam Wong from the city of Chandler. Councilmember Mark Freeman from the city of Mesa. Mark. Uh, Councilmember David Luna from the city of Mesa. Councilmember Jennifer Adams from Tempe. Jennifer, there you are. Councilmember Randy Keating from the city of Tempe. Did Randy make it? We also have uh, former mayor Phil Gordon, city of Phoenix. I will tell you this, it was like 24 degrees and Phil had almost that exact outfit on. <laughs> the pictures show Phil and Mary Peters, no overcoat, no anything. I had like a down jacket and scarves and everything. Phil braved it. Former mayor uh, Neil Giuliano, Neil, did you make it? look like it. Former Mayor, my predecessor, Keno Hawker of the City of Mesa. Uh, former Council Member Danny Valenzuela, City of Phoenix. Former Council Member uh, Shanna Ellis from uh, City of Tempe. Former Council Member Don Cassano from City of Tempe. Dennis Smith, former Executive Director of, of MAG. Danny, I saw you just walk in. There you are. Uh, former Council Member Kate Gallego and Vice Mayor of the City of Phoenix. Luis Heredia from the office of uh, Congressman uh, Ruben Gallego, and our Railverse rail presenting sponsors, Kiewit and PGH Wong Engineering. If you're from Kiewit, you can see it, raise your hand. And today's events host, LMC Development and Press Coffee, and we'll hear from their representative later. Let's give them all a big hand. <laughs> and now, the next thing. Is there an elected official that we did not recognize? That's always a scary thought. I'm sorry, what? Oh, Peggy. Where are you at, Peggy? Oh, I'm sorry, Peggy. <laughs> Former Councilmember Kevin, Peggy Bilston. Uh, you're on the list up there. I, we just forgot you here. Thank you, Mayor. We'll never forget you, Peggy. We will never forget you. Well, <laughs> except for today. <laughs> sorry. Today, we're going to hear from uh, some of our current leaders 
and also from uh, representative voices representing different facets of the success of light rail and the quality of life. Uh, the question is, once again, there was a lot of anticipation and a lot of promises made uh, really 15 years ago, 16 years ago, when the discussion on light rail really became serious. And then as light rail opened, there was a lot of anticipation. Uh, at the end of the meeting, and I don't know if you have a visual here, all of you will receive a copy of our quality of life because it gives just a, a little bit of the information, that a uh, report card, as to whether we, uh, whether in this corridor and in the region as a whole, we have delivered on our promise. Uh, the promise that those of you who are in here made 10 years ago, that this investment that the community would made would be a game changer, that it would make a difference, and that that difference would be positive. And I think by any measure, there's no doubt that light rail has made a positive change uh, in, in the, certainly the three communities in which it, uh, you find it, but also the region as a whole. I'd like to say one thing, and this is not a scientific measure, but I ask people all the time, said, if you think that light rail has not made an impact on this valley, I, I challenge you to look at a promotional video that's put out, and I was at, I was at GPEC yesterday with, with uh, 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 Chris Camacho, and I said, in your promotional video of Phoenix, do you show light rail? Yes. Go look at any chamber of commerce, any news station, any video that shows scenes of Phoenix, and invariably it will have a picture of light rail. That shows you that it's been more than investment, it's become part of the fabric of our life. We're going to begin with someone who uh, has been a supporter all along and is another one of my board members, so hold on, I'm going to suck up to her too. Uh, Mayor Thelda Williams uh, of Phoenix. Mayor? He's only saying that because his evaluation is coming up soon. <laughs> You know, it's hard to believe 10 years have gone by. I mean, it seems like it's been the blink of an eye. Uh, but the changes that have occurred are absolutely stunning. You look at downtown Phoenix today, go back 10 years. If you were down there at 6 p.m., you didn't see anybody. You do now. Around the clock, it has become the hot spot for eating, playing, putting a business in. We have over 300 new tech companies that are now down there, and it continues to grow all the time. We are very excited. I heard the other day, we now have 10,000 people now living downtown, and that was not there before, nor were the buildings. Uh, I think what's really important is to recognize how much work it took to get it there. I want to give Mayor Rimza and Mayor Gordon and Peggy, who was chair of transportation at the time, uh, to get this through and on the ballot and get us started. It took a lot of leadership, courage, and uh, you were motivated and you got it done. And you have changed this valley forever. And I just want to say thank you. I, I just want to mention Creighton University is uh, moving to downtown Phoenix. It is readapting the old Park Central, and it will become the university for medical students, for nurses and doctors, and research. And the reason they chose Phoenix was because that was the appropriate location, but more importantly, they were only looking at cities that had light rail. And that's why they chose Phoenix. And what it brings to us is beyond belief. You know, we have been very fortunate. We have connected our communities. The students go back and forth. People go back and forth. And we have been able to create social services along the line. We have more jobs. It carries the workers to Sky Harbor every day makes a difference in so many lives. And I tell you, we are promising to continue light rail and to improve the system. I'm, I'm swearing we're going to do this. <laughs> right, Kate? <laughs> right, Danny? <laughs> it is going to continue uh, because we will continue to improve the system. The ridership will continue to grow, and more and more people will benefit this. It's one of the reasons the Super Bowl is coming back, is they saw the progress in the light rail. So thank you for everyone who participated in this in the beginning. 
who has worked hard to make it happen. And I'm looking at Wolf. I've worked with you for 20 years, and you, you did it. And all the staffs, not only at the City of Phoenix, but the RPTA. Uh, you made a difference in so many lives. Uh, they may not know the difference, but I will tell you, they are seeking and finding the rewards of the system. So, thank you. And it's my pleasure to invite Didi Yazi up. She's with the Native American Connections, another great example of what, what this brings to Phoenix. I wish I had the mayor's red shoes on. <laughs> And yes, I've been on the light rail with my scooter. Um, some very polite people get up and let me sit down and I get on with, with my scooter. Um, just to get it out of the way, I fell off a fence on the Cliffs of Moher in Ireland and broke my leg, so I'm on the mend. I just wanted to say uh, thank you. Um, it's an honor to be able to represent the community with all the dignitaries here. Um, I am a resident of Mesa. 35 year resident in Mesa, but I have worked and served my community of Phoenix for over 40 years as the executive director of Native American Connections. And my family moved to Tempe in 1955 and built a home on the edge of town across from Daly Park. So I am connected to this valley deeply. Uh, Native American Connections began acquiring land along the light rail in 2006. Uh, it was proposed and under construction we envisioned our community of lower income working families having the same opportunity to enjoy the quality of life that comes with living near services, jobs, the arts, schools, shopping, and medical services. Just down the street from here, we have a new leaf developed by uh, Native American Connections, worked with a new leaf to develop La Mesita, providing affordable housing with access to hundreds of families and formerly homeless individuals having access to transportation. And very close to my heart is Apache Trail ASL. I have a deaf son, and it gives deaf and hard of hearing seniors affordable housing, again, access to transportation and important medical services. Last year, in partnership with the City of Phoenix, Native American Connections reopened the former Indian School, creating new partnerships with the Mesa Center for the Arts, Tempe Center for the Art, Phoenix Art Museum and the Heard Museum, all connected to our new Native American gallery along the light rail at Central and Indian School. Now, over, now NAC has over 400 units of affordable multifamily housing along the light rail, with our families working predominantly in the hotel, restaurant, and service industries, taking the light rail to work at the airport, and to downtown Mesa, Tempe, and Phoenix. We don't want our lower income working families having to drive until they qualify and having long commutes back into working in the service industry in our downtown areas. They deserve to live in affordable communities right along the light rail and in public transportation corridors. Research shows employees that have stable housing have far less turnover and far less absenteeism. So it's really important to think about your workers as we're developing light rail and creating affordable living places for them to live. And as you can see, I wish this were, somebody asked me if this was one of our developments. I said, no, but I wish it was. <laughs> we would not be sitting here if it wasn't for light rail. Light rail is probably one of the single most important development you know, that incentivize new development to come into our community, and, um, and I, I can't say enough about this community. But most important, light rail gives families the freedom of transportation mobility. Without all the costs of owning one or even two cars, most of you probably own family with two cars, HUD has a transportation index that indicates that a family saves over $10,000 per year on car payments, insurance, repairs, and gas by using public transportation. And this means families have greater housing stability with more disposable income for taking care of their family's basic needs and enjoying the quality of life. I wanna thank you for inviting me here today and having a voice of the community as we all work together 
to expand transportation access for all people and continue to make the light rail the most economical, efficient, and safest transportation for our families to get to work, shop, and play. So thank you for having me today. Thank you, Dee Dee. I guess I was remiss, and I didn't introduce myself, for those of you who don't know who I am. I'm Scott Smith, CEO of Valley Metro and, and former mayor of Mesa. And I was, the reason I say that is I was so lucky because I had been mayor only a few short months when I got to reap the benefits of all the great work that Keno Hawker did and his council members. Thank you, Keno, uh, for allowing me to do that. And uh, I was also, from day one, actually before I was mayor, got to know a gentleman who was our host mayor, Mayor Mark Mitchell. Mayor Mitchell was on the city council for many years and has always been a big supporter uh, of light rail and investment in transit and as mayor has continued that leadership role. So I'd like to introduce now Mayor Mark Mitchell of Tempe. Well, thank you so much, Scott. And it really is an honor to be here and, and welcome all of you to Tempe. And before I make some additional comments, I really want to thank uh, my council colleague, uh, Robin Arredondo Savage, for serving on the Valley Metro Rail as, and also the Valley Metro Board. Um, I, was, I served, I was honored to be the vice chair of the Valley Metro Rail with Elda and the board members uh, with Valley Metro. And it really is a phenomenal group. And what really I want to highlight is the cohesiveness and the collaboration regionally that we all work together. And our city staff, we could not do what we do without our staff. So thank you to the city of Tempe and staff and the former council member, Shanna Ellis, for her work and dedication uh, for transportation in this community, as well as former council member, uh, Don Cassano. Um, as we are gonna to continue to hear, I can't believe it's been 10 years, but more importantly, what light rail has meant to this valley. It really connects our entire region as well as our community really in Tempe from border to border. It supports um, our strong uh, commitment to sustainability to a truly multimodal community in Tempe. It also connects us more regionally, as I mentioned, and it allows the rest of individuals throughout the valley to enjoy the amenities of not just in downtown Tempe and Arizona State University, but also downtown Mesa and obviously downtown Phoenix. And the investments that we have made um, with public transportation and public transit has really not gone unnoticed by the business community and the development community in our region. We've seen an incredible surge of development along the light rail corridor, including the iconic corporate headquarters of State Farm, and this will be connecting in a couple years with our streetcar, and also all the several high-tech firms that we have in and throughout our Tempe, and I know Thilda mentioned the high-tech firms in downtown Phoenix. There's been more than $11 billion of public and private sector development along the light rail. And it's been within a half mile of the light rail. It would not have happened, as been mentioned before, uh, without the development and construction of light rail, we would not have that $11 billion investment, plus the future investment that we're gonna receive that's gonna be uh, even more significant. $11 billion of in, in investment in public and private partnership is really a staggering number. But maybe what's more staggering is the 35,000 plus jobs that have been generated along the light rail lines throughout our three communities. ASU students and staff also have really benefited from uh, the convenient access to light rail and, and getting to campus between Tempe and downtown uh, uh, Phoenix as well as in the future to ASU or to uh, Mesa. Convenience has really been a key important factor in site selection uh, for today's host, LMC. Uh, freedom and flexibility are some of the key words uh, that LMCs uses in their philosophy for development. And LMC is really creating communities, uh, not complexes along light rail. Um, they're really creating great communities uh, for us to live in as you see as we're here today. So again, congratulations to Valley Metro Rail. And with this, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Nate Stum, our host today from Lamar Multifamily Communities. Thank you, Mayor, and um, special thanks to Valley Metro for allowing us to host this great event. It really is an honor to have all of these people um, here in our community. Um, in 2014, LMC was fortunate enough to acquire two sites 
along the light rail. This site was one of them here at the Dorsey Station. The other um, over at Central and McDowell, a property that's now called the Muse. Um, these sites proximity and location along the light rail was instrumental in these properties um, getting financing for the, develop, the, the ultimate development that you see today. Um, our financial partners and of course our internal investment committees uh, were looking along Apache Boulevard in 2013 when we originally were under, underwriting this and some people were scratching their head thinking, Apache Boulevard, is this, is this where we're gonna uh, put $80 million um, for a project like this? And I can tell you, had it not been for the light rail, certainly, uh, as Mayor uh, Mitchell indicated, this project would not be here. And since, of course, we've seen um, uh, a, a tremendous uh, redevelopment and investment along the Apache Corridor and, and much to come. Our Central and McDowell project, um, at, at the time when we were underwriting it in 2013, there were rents, not the, the existing rents downtown were not even close to um, justifying uh, new development it, that early in the stage, of course. A lot has happened since then, um, but uh, the light rail, again, was a, was a huge factor. We were right at that Central and McDowell station, and uh, we were all bullish on the effects that the light rail would have, and that project has been widely successful, not just for us as um, uh, residential developer, but also as a mixed-use retail developer. We uh, also hosting this is uh, Press Coffee, and they have a an, an amazing uh, coffee shop downstairs. If you haven't been there, another one over at our Central and McDowell location, 40301 is also there at Central and McDowell, and have seen tremendous success. Um, not um, that, that I think we can contribute to um, to their proximity to the light rail and their location. So we're super excited um, and happy to be here with these properties, also long-term hold properties for, for Lennar, uh, which, which means a lot to, to see the further investment in the light rail as it continues. So in preparation for this event, we surveyed uh, our residents at our two light rail properties. Uh, and we found out that the vast majority of our residents are using, well, a third of the, our residents are using the light rail several times a week, which, which is a pretty good number. I mean, we've got 367 homes here, uh, 399 homes here, 367 at Central and McDowell. To say a third of those people are constantly using the light rail, many of those every single day. 30% um, of those, for example, at, at the Muse at Central and McDowell, a third are using those to get to work. So a third of our community goes to the light rail and gets to work on that, which is, which is really incredible. And, and truly a testament to the, um, the success and the demand and the real need for the light rail in our communities. So speaking on behalf of uh, the development and business community, we certainly thank Valley Metro, the cities of Phoenix, Tempe, and Mesa for making the light rail happen. And we are committed to continuing our focus and um, emphasis on development and investment uh, along the light rail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nate. Now I'd like to introduce the third mayor, my mayor. Uh, someone who has consistently supported uh, the investment and will tell you about some great things that are happening in his downtown. I'd like to introduce the most impressive and substantial mayor that Mesa has had since 2014, John Giles. <laughs> Thank you, it really is an honor to be here. This is an exciting event, uh, and uh, like many of you, I, uh, I had the privilege of being involved in government before this happened, and it's been really a lot of fun to see what has occurred. Uh, I recall uh, 20 years ago I was serving on our city council and I was up in our seventh floor office looking out at Main Street. And this was the absolute low ebb of downtown Mesa for a generation or more. And I recall uh, seeing, uh, again, nothing was happening. But by this time, tr between Tri-City Mall and US 60 and the 202 and the Fiesta Mall, I mean, all of the life had been sucked out of our downtown. And I remember looking out at that 
bleak uh, scene and there was a lame dog that slowly limped across Main Street. Uh, and I think it might have stopped midway for uh, personal hygiene. Uh, and I remember thinking at the time, this is pathetic. That's the only word I could think of at the time. Um, and uh, thankfully, I mean, it, fast forward to what it is now, it, it couldn't be a more dramatic contrast. Uh, part of that is due to, uh, and so thank you, Keno Hawker uh, and the Mesa City Council uh, for, uh, I, I was a skeptic, I think maybe like many. Uh, I, I, it didn't seem obvious to me that a, a, a fixed route transit system was a good fit for our uh, urban sprawl, western uh, environment. And I, I, I can't tell you how delighted I am to be wrong about that, that my skepticism was proven to be incorrect. Uh, this uh, the Valley Metro and, and the light rail has exceeded anyone's expectations, both in terms of ridership, but maybe more importantly, in terms of, of a, an economic development project. So uh, thank you for the, for the courageous uh, political leaders that stuck your necks out and your political fortunes out uh, to make this happen. Uh, Kino and Scott, uh, Kino getting it there, and Scott and Mr. Brady and Chris and, and the great council members in Mesa figuring out how to extend it. Uh, we, we are so delighted that uh, in May we will dedicate the next two miles in Mesa, taking it all the way out to a big, beautiful regional park and ride uh, at Gilbert Road uh, in, in downtown Mesa. So uh, on behalf of those of us who maybe wouldn't have been so brave, thank you for sticking your necks out and making this happen. So as I said, in Mesa, we're watching the revival of our downtown right before our eyes, thanks in huge part to light rail. More than $400 million in new housing and business developments have occurred along the corridor, rapidly changing the character and energy as compared to a decade earlier. With Benedictine University, Mesa Community College, and the integration of ASU, downtown Mesa is reverberating with new energy and possibilities. And who knew Mesa would be a hub for local craft breweries? That's not necessarily the first thing you think of, right? Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, Oro and Desert Eagle are bringing new visitors to downtown every day along with Cider Core. If you haven't been there, that's Arizona's first uh, cidery, and it's amazing. We've also seen a, a springboard of affordable housing projects in downtown Mesa that have really been done right, very high quality projects and new expansions along the way. Overall, the rail corridor is more affordable as compared to the county average with 2,200 plus new units along the line. We're also proud of our public art, which has helped transform the, land, the landscape of our downtown. Valley, Metro's, Valley Metro Rail's award-winning art program, now with 40 pieces along 26 miles, is an amenity that draws interest in our community and enhances the customer experience. This high quality customer experience and our ability to attract new business will continue as priorities as we expand to Gilbert Road. Light rail is a key anchor in our innovation district strategy for downtown Mesa. Uh, as you know, ASU is coming to downtown Mesa as well and they've made it clear from the first meeting we had with them, if it wasn't for light rail, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, we will continue to leverage our transit investment to attract and build a higher educated and higher wage workforce in Mesa. Mesa is experiencing an evolution and is certainly reaping the benefits of light rail, but we're not alone. As you've heard from my peers today, uh, and you'll hear from the rail anniversary video, which I'm excited to introduce at this point. Uh, this video reflects back on our opening day. Apparently it was a little chilly. It walks us through many of the accomplishments highlighted in the quality of life report that Scott has mentioned. And as it's as seen through the eyes of some of our most significant community partners. Please roll the video. engine, a quiet, non-polluting economic engine 
igniting investment and development that will be felt across the valley and throughout the state. Church have become great partners, one in being good stewards of God's creation, but also enabling us to use it to reach people all over this valley, and it has brought new life and diversity to this community. I prefer not to drive my car just because sustainability and just environmentally friendly. I prefer to take the light rail when I can. I think it's very convenient. More people are going to move here. The freeways aren't going to get less crowded. They're just going to get more crowded. So you might as well start doing it now. I've been dreaming about first place for more than 20 years. It was 25 years ago that our son, Matthew, was diagnosed with autism. And at that time, we were told to love, accept, and plan to institutionalize him. And I went to some of those places, some of those places that adults with autism and other special needs live. And I ran away as fast as I possibly could. And one of the most important criteria for our location and all locations is access to transportation. How do you get to that big world and that big life outside of the home where you live? And so our specific location here at Third Street in Catalina was because of the light rail and access to public transit. Housing partners and uh, apartments for staff and students and faculty can all be along the light rail. So it gives us a, a backbone to uh, build and conceptualize around. My hope is that light rail as it moves forward becomes expanded, that it continues to weave around and connect different communities, that it becomes linked with other modal forms of transportation, that there are on-demand driver services or autonomous vehicle services that are then connected to light rail. You know, you could in theory get off at a light rail station and then there might be an autonomous vehicle to take you somewhere else. All of those things then allow from that backbone, you know, a very sig significant transportation infrastructure to be expanded, deployed, modernized, all those things. Congratulations, happy birthday, Light Rail. Congratulations to the Light Rail for your 10th anniversary. Congratulations, Valley Metro Rail, for the last 10 years. Light Rail, 10 years old, I mean, man, you're almost getting ready to go to middle school. We'll be celebrating 50 years from now. Recognize Brittany Hoffman. Brittany, where are you? Oh, right there. Who uh, put that? You're, you're blushing now. That's okay. You deserve it. Who put that together? And thanks to all those who participated in that. Now we're getting to the part which is a little bit, uh, a little bit challenging. There were so many people that were involved in making this happen that it's really difficult to, to really identify those who were involved and who played different roles. But we tried. We talked to a lot of different people who were on the ground, who were part of leadership. And we tried to figure out, OK, who should we recognize, re understanding that there were so many more who did the legwork, the groundwork, and who really worked to make things happen. Um, you had, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm sort of, I favor mayors for some funny reason. <laughs> you had Mayor Skip Rimza, Neil Giuliano, Kino Hawker in Mesa, who, who took it. Phil Gordon, who really took it across the finish line uh, in, in Phoenix. Others who came after them who have benefited from that and have taken it to a new, new level as, as Mayors Mitchell and, and Giles. But we tried to figure out who could be sort of a spokesperson for this group. And we thought there was nobody who would serve that role better than former Phoenix Mayor Skip Rimza. So I'd like to introduce the, the man who really did a lot of the heavy lifting Peggy was there also, did a lot of heavy lifting. And, and to put things in, in perspective, remember, Valtrans went down in flames in 1989. 
So when he got around to around 2000 and Phoenix started talking about Transit 2000 and brought light rail back, you're only 10 years removed from what was really a very, very ugly uh, public vote. And yet people led by uh, Mayor Skip Remza were willing to jump into the fray, jump into the arena and take that and take that risk. So I'd like to introduce now former Phoenix Mayor Skip Remza. That was very kind of you. I was going to say more than anything, the people who worked with me on the campaign, Peggy Bilstein, Phil Gordon, the business community, they did a lot of heavy lifting. I was just the pretty face. And then really afterwards, uh, those of you who built the system, again, Phil led by all you community leaders and business people, you really delivered for all of us. It's amazing for me to see it running and running so completely, achieving the goals that we were thinking about, Rick, we're thinking about goals of having housing developed like this, we're thinking about businesses moving downtown, we're thinking about getting over to Mesa and Keno's community, but we worked together. I don't know why, maybe it was a special moment, but to see Mesa, Phoenix, and Tempe working together, come on, it was amazing. But let me tell you at the end here, when I look back, and I have not been particularly active in the community, I've kind of liked my private life after leaving the mayor's office. I just can't help but appreciate this community so much more. Uh, I run into people now when I travel around, uh, sometimes over the world, and I tell them about the valley, and it's twice the quality of life at half the price, and I'm not talking money. This is a place where someone can work downtown and make it to their kids' little league game by six. Most big cities in America, you cannot do that. This is a place where you can actually afford a house in any of the burbs and still work in the, in the centers of employment. Most places in the world, you cannot do that. And frankly, for me, this is a place where you can actually plan something, think about it, conceive it, and then see it get built. Many places in the world, they, they dream about doing things. And it sometimes happens, but it happens decades later. This is a unique place. And it's a unique place because people have chosen, in most cases, to try to work together. Building is, in fact, hard. Doing nothing is easy. It's, it's just always been that way in politics. But for whatever reason, during my term in office, we figured out a way to work together. And post my term in office, all of you have built something that is amazing and is only going to continue. Sure, there are challenges, but that's the sport of politics. But I think that this group, this community, is really prepared for these challenges. And I think what you've built so far is so beautiful and so amazing, achieving all the goals all of you have just articulated in a very short period of time. So as a guy who once was mayor, I want to thank you for building this out. And I know all of you who are in politics today, and then some of you might come in the future, will continue to build, because that's the culture of the valley the freeway system, the water delivery system. They're the culture of the valley working together to build something for the greater good, maybe not even for ourselves, but for future generations. So congratulations. Thank you for giving me a moment. I don't know why you did, but I, I really, really enjoyed coming down here, seeing all my friends, and hearing about how you plan for the future. It's exciting. I'll tell you, Skip, we, we figured we had to have you involved because you really are more than just a pretty face. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and once again, uh, there are many others involved in this, in this entire endeavor. And if I, we know we left people out, but uh, you, know, you never can recognize everyone. Phil. Would you mind, I think it's just knowledge. Really? Nice segue. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There is some, this, this day, however, is, is somewhat bittersweet because the, the truest champion and the great champion who was going to play a central role in this celebration is not with us, at least physically. Uh, and so we would like to take a moment uh, to remember our greatest champion. This is the beginning because from here, we're going to go further west, further east. Maybe Scottsdale will take us. I don't know. <laughs> 
going to happen is we're going to work with Leslie and the mayors and the council and, and all the volunteers from Maricopa County to ensure that this system continues to grow because there's people uh, in the west, in the east, south, and in the north that need to have access, affordable access, so they can get to work or to entertainment or whatever their purpose may be, they need to get to their destination. Ed Pastor was all of our friends. He, this system truly is his legacy. And I say that as somebody who never lived in Ed Pastor's district, but I can tell you as a mayor, Ed Pastor was always there for me and for the city of Mesa. He was always calling to see how you doing, what can I do to help. He was always there willing to do the heavy lifting, whether it be locally or back in Washington, D.C. And truly, this system is his legacy. So let's, you know, I, I'm not really into moments of silence because I think we should celebrate the great things, Ed. So let's give Ed Pastor and his family. And in Ed's words, he said, this light rail system is an adventure for the next 25 to 30 years. Boy, has it been. And we're going to need to expand it. Thank you, Ed. Rest in peace. Rest easy. We'll take it from here. As we wind down this portion of the event, I'd like to thank all of you for being here. Thank you to the Valley Metro staff, Hillary and her staff, Hillary Foose and her staff, for, uh, for arranging this. All of you for being here. You're here because you were part of something bigger than any of us. You're here because you've shown through your work and dedication, and yes, the risk taken, political or otherwise, that you're willing to think big and to do big things. And I think that's something we're really lacking in many ways here in Arizona now. I don't know when we quit thinking big, but in so many ways, we're on the road to accepting average. And nobody in this room accepted average. We always thought bigger than us. We hope that this is not only a 10-year look back, but a generation look forward. Um, the reality is, is that uh, this system and this vision and this dream is under attack right now and is at risk, at serious risk. There are those in our community who not only do not believe in this dream, but who don't think big and don't want to move forward. We are so grateful that we have mayors, Mayor Giles, Mayor Mitchell, Mayor uh, Williams, who believe in this system and believe in this investment. We're so grateful that Danny, Kate, good luck to both of you. We will have a mayor in Phoenix that also is an advocate and a supporter and will be a champion. But there are dark, cl dark clouds on the horizon. We need your help. We need your work, and as Skip said, we need your vision. Let's not make Ed Pastor's legacy stop at where we are. One of the scary things is that most communities around this country, when they reach 10 years in their light rail, different parts of their city are fighting to see who gets the next extension. Even Salt Lake City, the very conservative regional Salt Lake, just a tad bit less conservative than Mesa, <laughs> fought over how to expand, so what they did is they did it all. We are the only city that is literally at risk of stepping backwards and ending a program rather than expanding it. We will need your help. We will need your financial help, your physical help, your emotional help over the next few months to overcome this and to make sure that this system continues to give. You'll get a, you'll get a, a, a brief report of that, something to build off of with the quality of life. This is not all inclusive. It's literally a snapshot, a snippet. Hannah Quincy, where are you, Hannah? She stepped to the back. Uh, tell Hannah thank you. Hannah Quincy is one of our staff members, young staff members who took this challenge on. There you are, Hannah. Hannah, wave your hand. Who took this on and really put her heart and soul into producing this. And there's so much more information that will come out in a much fuller report. But this is a start. We know that over the last 10 years, uh, Light Rail has not only delivered on the promises, it has far exceeded the promises. There is nobody, and from the doubters, like John Giles, to the champions uh, like uh, Skip Rimza, who can say, Gee, I saw this coming. Because everybody is amazed by what we have done. We have surpassed any and all expectations that were set 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. And we need to continue that. Thank you once again for being here. Help us to celebrate. This, this is only the start. All month long, we're going to be uh, 
We're going to be celebrating this. You'll see uh, op-eds in the newspaper. You'll see other reports. I don't know if you've noticed, but the Arizona Republic reporters are actually using transit for the next week. Uh, that's part of our plan that Chip and, uh, and Hillary and everyone have put together. We want the community to, to once again not take this for granted, but to recognize what has gone into and how this has changed our lives. And then on December 27th, uh, which is the actual day uh, that we have, we'll have a, a special celebration at Talking Stick Arena in downtown Phoenix. You're all invited to that. We'll have both a, a, a formal commemoration and then a public event at Talking Stick Arena. And one of the great things that we're going to have on that day is, Hugh, free rail for everybody. So uh, the idea is uh, let's, take this, let's take this opportunity over the next month to truly celebrate what this uh, commitment, investment, and act of thinking big has done for our community. Thank you again, and may you be, have a safe ride home, whether you drove or rode on light rail. May it be safe, and we're looking forward to working together. Thanks, everybody.